My name is Rebecca Moore, and uh, I founded the Institute for Animal Happiness here. And I went vegan sort of in two stages, like a lot of people. First, I went vegetarian, and that happened a long time ago. I was 10 years old, and I was at camp, and I got to meet a chicken for the first time, which I was a kid from the city, so like we didn't see chickens that often, ever. <laughs> They were little baby chicks. I got to play with them a little. They were behind a building in a cage and I sort of built them a ramp. I got really into them and sort of feeding them treats and seeing them jump on my arm and, and nibble leaves when I offered them, you know, little treats. And one fell asleep uh, on me as I read a book. And I remember being very moved by that. And then I just happened to get that light bulb moment where <laughs> I was led into the lunchroom one day after, for lunch after playing with this chick. And we were served chicken. And that was a, a first time, and I'm so lucky because kids in the city don't get that chance, that I got to connect that m someone <laughs> became what was put on this plate in front of me and it just so happened there was a girl at, in my cabin at the same table and she was not served that. So a lot of pieces had to come together. And this was before the internet, smartphones, uh, even most of the vegan books you see these days. So I asked her, why are you not eating chicken? And she said, well, uh, we don't eat animals. So she had a beautiful spaghetti and a salad and I said, I love animals too. Um, why can't I get that? And I tried to ask for it. And they said, well, your parents didn't reserve this at the beginning of the year. So I was devastated. And needless to say, I went back home at the end of the two months there. And I didn't eat very much for the rest of my time there. And uh, declared I was never eating animals again. This was 1978. So I'm 53 now. Um, Cut to several decades later, I'm a happy vegetarian, but nobody had told me. And again, there were no books, no internet, no Facebook. The word vegan wasn't talked about, but um, I finally got that information, the truth about eggs and the incredible harm that they do because these birds are engineered to lay way too many and the harm that does to them. And um, that it's not an act of nature. And, you know, you learn about all the dairy cows that are taken from their moms and still made into veal and meat, you know, and all these horrible things that nobody tells you. And for some reason at that time, this is now 15 years ago, it was still, you know, I didn't have a good computer. It just still wasn't really talked about. I went vegan right then and there. That was about 2005, 2006. There was still a learning curve. You know, you have to learn how they hide these ingredients and everything, but it was the best change I ever made in my life. And it started me on a larger quest about a lot of issues of oppression and sort of the structural oppression and exploitation and harm that's built into our society. So honey here is the kind of uh, person, I like to call them people, <laughs> who need space at a place like our micro sanctuary. We get a lot of calls about abandoned or injured or discarded birds. And unfortunately, uh, Honey was at a local egg and meat farm and they had the presence of mind when she was left out in the snow overnight to realize she was getting frostbite. But as is so typical of for-profit exploitation businesses, medical care and veterinary care was not in their budget and not in their uh, mission. They didn't care to provide it for her even if they could have. So they called me though and said, you know, I think they Googled us and said, your chicken rescue, if you don't come get her, we're gonna make her into meat. And it was very surreal going to pick her up. I didn't know what was ahead. I'd never dealt with a bird with uh, frostbite before, and it was a three-month process, her losing her foot. But that was several years ago, and she's been here ever since. She made it through with veterinary care, medicine, pain control, 
and it's like three years later, she's just an amazing, beautiful, sweet bird and an amazing member of our, it's our family here. Every bird is our family. <laughs> I think being vegan really does change you physically, mentally, emotionally. It's, it's very incredible and sort of profound. Um, you, a lot of people talk about feeling lighter or feeling um, like lighter, not physically. I'm talking, you know, psychologically. And I felt that a lot too. Um, I just felt physically um, more vibrant, more energy, and I need the energy because I'm doing physical labor for most of the day. But I think there's a lot of cultures that believe it's not just about diet and sort of nutrition, the facts about fat and cholesterol and all this stuff that you might feel a bodily or even a spiritual change. If you study it enough, there's a lot of cultures that actually believe if you take in uh, someone who, into your body who is subjected to so much harm and torture and suffering, you ingest that terror and stress and anxiety. And it's really hard to discount that when you feel the kind of lightness that takes over you when you stop eating these beings that have been so harmed and so tortured for their short lives. It's got to affect you to eat someone who has been through that. So by choosing not to do it, you know, it's, it's a really profound difference. I think for me, the, the thing I've noticed the most um, besides the physical changes and emotional changes, but psychologically, just the act of going vegan, I have looked at the whole world differently. It just cracks everything open, uh, everything you thought you knew about how society was functioning. And for me, that's a psychological release as well, because I really didn't realize how unconscious I was about, <laughs> about how, uh, how our society is founded on the exploitation of others. I'd intellectualized it in a classroom, but I didn't emotionally really absorb the impact of that on myself and on everyone and on the environment. And so I walk through the world differently since making this choice. And I've become a deeper like social justice activist, I think just an activist in general and a participant in the world and in trying to see the end of oppression. And that means many things to different people and it's a lot of different avenues and, and different ways of moving through the world that will achieve that. But for myself, it meant opening a sanctuary of my own after going to work at others. My whole life has changed. And physically, the demands on me, the emotional demands on me running a micro sanctuary are intense, but you do it with a joyful heart. And I wouldn't have been this person who could do that until I went vegan. I think there's so many uh, really good reasons, amazing reasons to go vegan. Um, obvi obviously for me, the animals are the main <laughs> reason um, and the amount of suffering and harm uh, foisted upon them. and the hell that is their short lives, you know, I, that's enough of a reason and it should be enough. But then there's so many other reasons now um, that are incredible. The planet is really suffering and we know that animal agriculture is <laughs> uh, one of uh, the top three contributors to climate change and the climate crisis. We know that oceans are being overfished and depleted, and we, we just know that resources can't keep up with the way animal agriculture uh, affects land use. Something like 83% or 81% of the Earth's surface is devoted to something related to animal agriculture. It may not be animal grazing specifically, but it might be growing feed or bedding, like hay for uh, animal agriculture. And, and that's just untenable. It's an important choice. And when I use the word choice, I just want to say that I personally 
don't think something that affects so many others is choice anymore. Like we should want to do something that doesn't harm others. We should want to stop doing that. So this is really critical. I mean, choice is a good thing, but if your choice causes so much harm, that's, that's a question people need to really ask themselves why they want to make that choice. And that's a question for humanity at this point where we are really close to the end. We're, we're over doing our resources and we're really close to the end of, of sort of being able to live in the state of excess that we've been existing at. And we need to either decide to make choices that benefit others and sort of protect others or we very well might be burning the, the floor right underneath our feet. We engage in a ton of uh, education, mostly through social media. People can come here and visit, but it's been COVID-19 pandemic time. So we're not seeing that many people in person, but it's amazing how many you can reach um, just through social media. And as a very small organization with pretty much zero budget, you know, we do educational posts. I, my favorite thing is sharing their care, um, medical care, veterinary care, um, the way they're housed, that they have housing that's heated and insulated, even how we make sure they each have clean water every day, which I'm really obsessed with, sort of rigging waters uh, for every bird based on their height and their physical ability so that everyone has water access. And things like that go very far towards making people question what the what care they thought a chicken was deserving of. And then that starts a, a deeper process of questioning. But we also, um, because we don't have real land, you know, we rent a half an acre plot here for the micro sanctuary. But that um, forced us to think outside the box because a lot of sanctuaries have a lot of land and they'll do events on their property. Since we can't do that, we came up with doing a big vegan festival for our area, and it was the first large-scale vegan festival in the region, fully vegan. And um, we bring educators from all over the area and a little bit beyond. We don't have a big budget, but we've had one or two people manage to come from farther away. So we're, we're bringing speakers here and organizations here. Um, that nobody's ever seen all under one roof in the Hudson Valley. So that's very profound experience. If anybody's ever been to a big vegan festival, you know that it's that combined power of seeing the whole vegan world sort of laid out so beautifully. Um, so we're really excited about that. We're also, we publish a thing called the Hudson Valley Vegan Guide. And it's just um, a little mini magazine with recipes and articles and features all the farm animal rescues, and then it also lists all the vegan businesses we could possibly dig up and, and um, makes them more accessible to the public, and we drop those everywhere. And then the last thing I'm really excited about, which is debuting this summer, is we're doing a free vegan food cart in partnership with a local food pantry called People's Place in Kingston. So it'll be the first time a food pantry in the area has a 100% vegan offering and we'll, it'll cover the day that their kitchen is closed and we'll be out on the sidewalk with the cart serving up free vegan food to anybody who needs it. So these are, you know, profound ways that I'd like to encourage anyone. You may not have land, you know, but there's a lot of things you can do to bring vegan accessibility and education and information um, to your area and support the work of other vegans there. Um, so this was a hu hugely important to us to, to go into the community where we are, um, work with organizations already there, or bring ones here that hadn't been here before and just create more awareness. So Honey is just super relaxed and most people <laughs> Don't see that when a chicken is snoozing, sometimes they can stretch their necks out pretty far. And this actually reminds me of that first chick that fell asleep on me. I, I thought something was wrong with them because 
their neck became so long, but it's just because she's super relaxed. <laughs> I would say that my family was pretty great about it. Like they accommodated, they accommodated me as a 10 year old uh, wanting to be vegetarian pretty easily. And then they went mostly that way when I was a kid. They've always been very open-minded and sort of renegade, um, avant-garde type. So I was lucky. I had a supportive family that I think, I think every vegan out in the world, <laughs> it's a different story. And I definitely have lost friends, um, a lot of them, sort of just from my close inner circle. We may still be friendly, but, you know, it's just weird to be putting so much into this and, and rescuing chickens and then sort of go to their, be invited to their par a party at their house and they're serving chicken. And just um, once you sort of get out of the mainstream diet and the mainstream world of of harming animals. It's just very weird to be around that anymore. And I tend to get a little depressed, you know, because I share what I do and I try to be really eloquent about it, but um, it doesn't always affect people. And then you just feel yourself sort of drifting away, but you find new friends and you find a chosen family that is really great. As with everything in life, it's not about the labels ultimately. And um, anyone can put a label on themselves, but they may not actually be that. And compassion is a label that people put on themselves very proudly. And the best thing we can each do is just look for the authenticity of what you're needing. So, you know, if you're looking for a compassionate world, it's not always where the places have the big sign that says sanctuary or compassion, but keep going because you will find your community and sort of I did, you know, and it was through a lot of, you know, hard work and sort of a lot of disappointment, brokenheartedness and sort of picking myself up and moving on to the next place. But eventually, you know, I have a pretty solid and kind and beautiful and hardworking <laughs> Uh, vegan community. <laughs> I have a kitty walking through this. <laughs> hi, Nermal. That's Nermal. Little Nermy, hi. I have zero regrets about going vegan. It's really changed my life in a way that's so profound I can't wrap my mind around it. I was on the way to a totally different career and existence. I think I really was only maybe operating at like one quarter the con consciousness about the world, even though I really was like, you know, educated and liberal and aware and an activist. But once uh, I had the vegan info and changed, I was able to, through a process of real um, hard work and self-examination sort of, um, change the entire arc of my life and one that is a little bit more a lot more in service to others and I feel I feel really um, at peace about that and it's given me a lot of peace to sort of uh, pursue this sort of caregiving work and to center caregiving as part of my ethics you know to, I believe that caregiving really needs to be centered in our society and that whether it's a human or a non-human that you are taking care of, we change the entire focus of our lives when we understand the importance of giving care to others. And we, we elevate empathy more in society and when we make that a priority and when we make that something important. And it has the power to transform society. Something I... I feel gratitude for every day that I sort of got out of my my bubble. Definitely like the one regret is I I didn't go vegan sooner. I wish I had. Um, I didn't get the information. And I think that's why a lot of us talk about it so incessantly. People make fun of vegans for that, you know, but it's really just because we remember that moment of sort of humiliation and indignity when we found out the truth about how all this food we were eating was procured and and put in front of us 
and it's almost so elementary you're you go okay yeah of course a cow has to give birth for there to be milk for it to be siphoned off for other people but unless you're in a farming community you don't know that and so you don't figure it out for yourself but when someone says it you're like wow that's just so obviously wrong so we then in turn now become passionate activists and talk about it and educate because of course we don't want someone else to have those regrets oh gosh now Never, ever, ever going back to eating. Oh my gosh, no. And I don't, and I think people who quote unquote do go back never really became vegan because when you do, when you understand the ethics of it, there's no going back at all. My first thought is they probably never really were vegan. Like they were literally probably just doing it as a fad sort of thing. I mean, some people you'll hear say, oh, I just wasn't feeling well. That just means they didn't get to the point and take the time to find the optimal vegan diet for them. Because again, you know, they may have been eating too many starches while being vegan, or they may have been, some people can't do too many uh, greens, you know, like there's things you're gonna not digest as well. Uh, and everybody's physiology is different. So maybe, you know, if you're an ultra marathon runner, you're going to have to eat a certain amount of protein or drink a certain amount of water. And also just going vegan, your whole body has to recalibrate to a new diet. So if you don't take the time to do that and be patient with the process and nurture yourself and take care of yourself, you may have a bad transition. Some people do, some people don't. Some people instantly feel great. But um, I think that, unfortunately, we're in a moment um, in history where there are these things called influencers, and they sort of do things because they're trendy in the moment and getting, you know, getting them clicks and hits on their social media pages. And they do, un they do uh, influence a lot of people when they make these grand statements about stopping being vegan. But... Anyone who's made the choice to go vegan for the, all the ethical reasons stated, you know, animals, people, planet, you know, health, don't tend to stop because they just work with the diet and you work with all the literally millions of food choices within a vegan diet. For some people, I think economics, you know, it's not necessarily more expensive to be vegan, but it can be inaccessible to people in um, certain poorer areas where there isn't access to fresh food or there isn't affordable food in general. So you can't be elitist about it. You really have to understand the food challenges, the racism challenges, the classism, the ableism challenges of each area and region and demographic and the idea is to give support and lend uh, a hand and try to help as many people who can have access to this kind of healthy food. Just like any diet chains, you don't, you don't hit it necessarily the first time. Like there's, there's many different versions of a vegan diet, you know, just like there's many different versions of any other diet. So, you know, you may benefit from more greens you may benefit from more beans like your whole metabolism is going to be your own and you so within the myriad and millions of vegan options you'll find the combo that works for you and the and um that fulfills your body's nutritional needs and you do have to get that right there's some touch and go i remember at times not feeling so great but that was also there's an initial detox that happens when you first go vegan because you're literally like, you are stopping hopefully a lot of processed foods and a lot of salts and a lot of other things that were in those processed foods. Um, and so you feel your body change to adapt to that. And a lot of people, I think some give up when they're going through that. But just like any change, you just have to ride it out and um, make it, you know, make it work for you. And hopefully the ethics are important enough for you and the 
and the longer term benefits that, that you can see and are very laid out scientifically and, uh, you know, ethically speaking. And so you, you'll find what works for you. <laughs> Vegan donuts. <laughs> no, <laughs> I do love donuts. I have a thing, but I like healthy food. I am definitely a tofu person. I love, you can make it a million ways. Tofu, tempeh, seitan are definitely regular things where like steaming, sauteing, you name it. Um, we love a big salad with chickpeas and, you know, uh, a lot of herbs and tomatoes and we also love stir fries and I'm a big fan of like doing rice bowls where you steam you know a lot of veggies and just have them on rice with a tahini lemon sauce that's kind of my I have to say I crave that even now just talking about it I'm like that sounds so good we're mostly health food here but I I don't say no to a, a good vegan cupcake either <laughs> and I should say Nooch on everything. <laughs> Nooch on everything. When I got started, there wasn't even like meetups. I think if I were getting started now, I would try to go in vegan community social media spaces that were friendly with an emphasis on friendliness. Um, and the idea is try to find one or two vegan buddies, you know, that you can hang out with and you know support each other and that's really key even one really makes the difference um because there there is a lot to learn and you don't want to be again elitist or classist and assume everybody understands you, you could go to buy potato chips and and suddenly there's whey powder in them and it can feel very frustrating and you can often feel um, like you're failing, like you're just not doing a good job. And I think just having that friend who's going to help you um, do it in, a, again, a joyful, happy way. It really should be happy and joyful. It shouldn't, it shouldn't ever be an experience where someone's making you feel guilty or horrible just because you didn't know something, you know. Humans have a way of doing that about everything, but not just ve vegans, but you can go in some spaces where it can be a little overwhelming and you feel like you have a lot to learn all at once. But, you know, just be gentle on yourself um, and go to that health food store and start choosing vegan options. There's so many great films you can watch to be inspired now. Forks Over Knives, Cowspiracy, Seaspiracy, Game Changers. Um, the list goes on. There's just amazing vo uh, voices and personalities now that um, local vegan festivals like Black Veg Fest in New York City. Um, there's Tabitha Brown, who's like called America's mom. And she's just this amazing um, personality and spirit and chef and mother sort of doing vegan things on Instagram. There's really a lot of great vegan local festivals and farm animal rescues and seek these places out. I think they'll just solidify for you why you made the choice and um, make it seem really, really exciting and sort of uh, give you the support you need. Um, you, <laughs> whatever you think you know about the cruelty and harm and torture and suffering and literal depravity is enacted on animals. Whatever you know about that made you go vegan or has made you consider going vegan, I can attest it's a million times worse. It is a million times worse than what you've heard, read, the footage. You can't visualize 150 billion animals being rushed through a slaughter system. There's no visual for that. Like it would be like if behind me there was literally a sea of blood. There's no um, way you can comprehend it. What you know about the cruelties in the system, especially when you go into animal rescue, I never know everything. I'm constantly learning a new 
torturous procedure, a new um, way they are transported, a new way the slaughterhouse works, a new machine used on them, a new toxic chemical. Every time I think I know everything there is to know about how they are treated and what's done to them, I learn something new that just, you know, takes the air out of the room. You're making the right choice. And it's an imperative. It shouldn't be a choice, to be honest. No one should be able to choose to willfully torture and harm innocent, living, sentient beings. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be a choice. But for whatever reason in this world, it is. So I want you to know that um, in doing this, you will continue to unlock doors. You will continue to learn. It doesn't end. It's not like you go vegan and you're like, I, I knew everything there is to know. It's an endless process. Lauren Ornelas of Food Empowerment Project said, just because your food is vegan doesn't mean it's cruelty free. As part of her campaign of to make people learn about child labor in the chocolate industry. And I feel like as part of the vegan journey, what's interesting about it is animals are at the core of the, and the reason for veganism as it is, as the term was coined in 1946, but it's existed in society far longer than that and uh, in the world and in different parts of the world and in uh, communities of color. And um, what, what we have with our food system now um, is very problematic and very deeply broken and really directly harms other humans too. So part of the beauty of becoming vegan <laughs> is I think ironically we'll start to learn more about a lot of people who haven't thought about it will learn about the human cruelty, the, the cruelty to humans in our food system as well. And reading um, and seeing her talk and reading her words and following her organization really made me, again, look at our whole food system differently, made me question and look at my own veganism very deeply and I think that's the point of going vegan. I really think it's to help animals definitely but in in the larger scope it's that question of how can we do less harm and especially particularly with our food choices and our lifestyle choices. So I think veganism is it's just a huge step in that journey.